Welcome back to Close Up. There are a lot of candidates with unique experiences and backgrounds that run for office in New Hampshire, but our next guest has a life story that is likely a first for anyone running for Congress in New Hampshire. Lily Tang Williams escaped communist China and now wants to bring her passion for liberty to Washington, D.C. Lily, thanks for joining us this morning on Close Up. Well, thanks for having me, Adam. Yeah. For starters, tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running for Congress. Well, I was born and grew up in um, People's Republic of China. I grew up under Mao's regime, so Chairman Mao was godlike to me, and I was born into also working poor families and in Sichuan province. I went to college to study law, to search for truth, and I totally gave up my hope for China, one party dictatorship. So when I decided to flee, I chose America, my promised land. And I thought because of the um, founding fathers documents, declaration of independence, all men are created equal, brought me to this country. So when I finally arrived in America, I was uh, two months before my 24th birthday to attend a graduate school in Austin, Texas. And, you know, you said on the stump in one of your speeches, you know, that essentially you fear that the country you love is becoming like the country you left. You know, you see some philosophical threads shared in common between the American left and then Mao's communist China. Some would argue that's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but you lived it. So what is it that you see that has you so worried? I was very worried for a few years, and I noticed this swift change of rhetoric and terms used by politicians and by um, college campuses. So basically, they are using the communist and socialist terms and uh, indoctrinate our children. And of course, last two years, I, I really could not sleep well. I saw these things with my own eyes in our uh, you know, inner cities. And kind of similar to what I saw in Mao's China. You know, the, this identity politics, division of society, and also the cancel culture, the violence, riots, and, and silence, dissident voices, you know, really got me very worried. I saw this rise of authoritarianism that where the government just can cancel citizens' rights and tell them to um, stay home, close their business, and uh, you must uh, and take the medicine that they, they want you to take, otherwise you lose your jobs and careers. It, it's just all very, very terrifying to me because I saw them all in China. Before we get into some policy issues, this is not your first run for federal office. You did mount a campaign for U.S. Senate in Colorado a few years ago as a libertarian. Are you still a libertarian now and just choosing to run as a Republican? And we should point out that's not an uncommon thing in New Hampshire. That happens a lot at the state house. Well, I was a Republican for many years. When I became a citizen, I did my internship in state capital of Colorado, and I got really upset under Bush when he bailed the banks with taxpayers' money and say the capitalism failed. And so I went to Libertarian Party, and uh, we had the easy ballot access, so I ran for two offices for them and just want to tell my stories and warn my American citizens about the trend the country is going down. And I got a very loud cheers, and I practiced a lot speaking English and gaining political experience by running for office. And I, I, I noticed third party was not very effective because I was kept out of debate, out of poll numbers. So I went back to Republican Party, my old party in Colorado, before I left. And I come here registered Republican, and I got very active in my local town where and started the Republican committee. I was a chair for 18 months, and I got elected also supervisor of checklist and uh, co-founded the Aging American Coalition. So lots of people know me because of my personal activism. I, I normally, if I'm worried about something, I'm gonna do something about it. That's what I did in, in my new state. Obviously, there's a lot of focus right now on Russia and its invasion of Ukraine. But one of the subplots to this story is that China is not joining the chorus of other nations in condemning Russia's actions. What do you think that tells us about China's eventual intentions for Taiwan? 
Well, I've been warning people about China. Just just imagine how bad the situation is now with Russia, a uh, $1.8 trillion um, economy, and China is $18 trillion economy, the second largest in the world. We still rely on China for lots of supply chains. And China has called Russia always better than allies. And the reason today they call Russia now the strategic partners, not going to section Russia. They actually met in February between two country leaders and made a deal worth for $110 billion to support Russia's economy. And China just abstained itself yesterday from voting on the sections at the United Nations. So I think that we should think about what to do with China now and what kind of section we could impose if they do an event to Taiwan. We cannot wait last minute. And I just wonder, before Russia actually took Ukraine, what did the Western world countries' leaders do? Did, put, did, did Putin get a phone call from President Biden and have conversation and before just escalating to this kind of situation? There are lots of questions I don't know, but I would like to offer my service to my country to, to President um, Biden and to all my Congress uh, and people here in New Hampshire. I am a professional expert witness on China and as a consultant, I will be very happy to um, get the phone calls from them, offer my suggestions when it comes to deal with China. You're an outspoken opponent of critical race theory, which basically holds that racism permeates American life, that it's systemic here. Why do you think the government should take action against this idea, as a lot of Republicans have done here in uh, New Hampshire? Laws have passed against that. Where's the liberty in the government trying to suppress an idea? Well, according to the state constitution law of um, our granite state, um, you cannot use taxpayers' money to teach discrimination and to teach um, communism. So, well, you, you know, all public schools are taxpayer funded, are government funded. So if they are against the state constitution teaching discrimination, um, for, for example, critical race theory basically is saying that if you are um, white, you are born racist, you have incompatible bias, and America is a systemic racist country, I mean, as an immigrant who come here, who took a lifetime risk to come here, lose everything in China, I just cannot buy into that. I, our kids should not be indoctrinated by that kind of ideology. Teach you history, teach you civil rights movement, teach you MLK, but teach our kids to feel bad about what they're born with. It is like most cultural revolution. You are guilty at the birth. And then citizens are divided into oppressor versus oppressed groups. And, and I think this is a very dangerous and tactic used by the uh, Marxists. So I, I cannot buy into that. I support our laws. And I'm trying to have a conversation with people who disagree with us. And uh, um, so I'm open to you know discuss with them. And last question here for you, Lily. If Republicans take over Congress, there are some who believe that President Biden should be impeached. Would you be supporting those efforts if you're in Congress in the next election cycle? Oh, I have not looked into that issue at all. And uh, I'm a focus on my campaign, get my messages out. As I said, I see the similar cultural revolution is happening on American soil. It's more than just from the federal government. It, it's all over in our cultural world. They, they you know, canceled culture, social justice uh, movement and our kids being indoctrinated. So I, and the inflation, gas price, there's so many things I need to focus on. So I am trying to stop that cultural revolution on American soil. I'm trying to warn my fellow citizens about danger of communist China. So there are so many things I need to focus on. And uh, so I, I hope I will. I hope people give me a, a look. All right, Lily Tang Williams, thank you so much for joining us on Close Up. We appreciate the time. Thank you, Adam. All right, we'll see you out there on the campaign trail.